Welcome to a new vlog, today a review video just in time for Christmas. So you know I've been talking about building my own spot welding machine in previous videos. That project is still active but progress is slow. In the meantime I've been contacted by Banggood, they wanted to offer me something to do a review and I thought I'd try out one of these Chinese spot welding machines. This way I could have something to compare with when I finish my own. So I picked uh, this model from uh, their inventory, is the uh, Sanko 737G. I got the 220 volt version for EU. If you live in a 110 volt country, you need to choose the appropriate model and I will place links for both of the models in the description below. So why do we need a spot welding machine? Because it provides a safe and reliable way of connecting battery cells and if you've ever worked with a professional battery cell, you have noticed they, are, they have spot welded tabs. Sure, you could take the risk and try to solder your own battery cells. I have done that in the past, but I would rather avoid doing it if I can because it's risky. The temperature of the cell will rise too much while heating it up with the soldering iron. This machine does it in the blink of an eye, so the cell doesn't even get hot. So let's see what uh, we get inside the package of this uh, unit. Uh, as uh, usual, a uh, user manual. It's in English and uh, you can pretty much understand uh, what the user manual is about. The English is uh, pretty good in, in this manual. But they also offer you a few accessories in here. They give you this uh, bag with four electrodes, uh, an allen key and a spare fuse. Inside this bag they give you the uh, pedal switch, which is uh, all metal. Unlike the plastic one which I got from AliExpress uh, a few months ago. And inside this package it looks like uh, we have some kind of forming tool for, for batteries. So I bet this is uh, designed to allow you to solder, to place your 18650 cells and then solder the, uh, the tabs at exactly the same position so, so you end up with a, with a really nice looking uh, battery pack. It's nice for them to include this. And we get some, uh, some nickel strips. So these are the strips you use to, to connect the, the cells between them. And I see they have included quite a few in here. They're a different width. So we would have to, so we will probably use these later when we do some tests. And here is the spot welding machine itself. I have it plugged in right now. It's a pretty simple model. As you can see, I have already installed two electrodes. We have some LED lighting in here for the work area, which is really nice. And um, uh, this model works with one or two pulses, which I can adjust with the, uh, uh, this simple user interface. And I can also adjust the current right here. Uh, I would call that maybe a duty cycle adjustment. And um, I think the length of the pulses are non-user adjustable. We have an input for the uh, foot switch. But I'm not sure that is needed because we have a switch on the electrodes themselves. So uh, when you push up on the electrodes, I can hear a switch. So maybe that's all that's needed for soldering. Uh, you don't get uh, one of those extending tools with wires so you can solder away from the machine. Uh, that is available for the more expensive uh, machines. Uh, it could be a problem if you want to build large battery packs, but it doesn't affect me as I'm building only small battery packs which can easily fit in this uh, work area. We also have an adjustment on the top of the machine, which is uh, for the pressure in these uh, welding arms. So if you adjust, there, there's this, these are spring loaded and you can adjust the tension on that spring. So uh, you'll have to push harder on these arms or lighter and that will in, uh, in return impact the uh, spot welding because if you're working with some thicker uh, battery tabs, you will need to adjust this for a higher pressure 
to ensure the uh, the electrodes uh, really push into the uh, battery tabs and solder them accordingly. I can see these uh, two arms can move independently and I guess that's a good thing because if you don't have the electrodes at exactly the the same level these uh, spring uh, arms will take some of that difference away and will will still provide a uh, a good welding surface. I think we've seen uh, enough at the exterior there isn't much else to talk about but uh, I'm very interested in seeing how this thing is built so let's do a teardown of the unit looks like there's a bunch of screws holding it together I am going to remove all of these screws I think I got all of the screws off let's see if we can lift the cover and here is the inside of our machine this is pretty much what you would expect we have a uh, big transformer and a front panel uh, controlling everything so power comes in uh, through here uh, it goes through a uh, fuse first uh, all contacts are heat shrink and then there is this um, ground point here uh, with a self-locking nut uh, the case is uh, painted all over in that spot so that's not ideal uh, but still we have grounding the power wires are then routed uh, all the way to the uh, front panel for a uh, rocker switch the on off switch we have the transformer which is mounted on this uh, plastic uh, block i'm not sure of the purpose here it might be to insulate the transformer from the case but the core and chassis of the transformer should already be isolated so i don't see the point it might also be to allow for better cooling of the transformer but I don't see any holes in the plastic block to allow the air to pass so I'm really not sure of why they raised the transformer from the bottom of the enclosure but we do have a quality issue here let me show you you see the transformer is really moving these, uh, these screws they have are loose and I'm gonna have to fix that it would be nice to find these uh, transformers ready-made on AliExpress or something like that instead of trying to modify a uh, microwave transformer for our, our uh, DIY versions of these uh, stations. So these are built exactly for this purpose. They have the right amount of turns in the secondary uh, with this heavy copper with the right width to carry that current. Uh, they also have a second uh, winding on the secondary. Uh, it's this one to power the electronics so these would be ideal for a DIY version and then we have the uh, electronics which are right here on the front uh, panel I'm gonna have to try to to get the uh, board off uh, it was held in by uh, three screws that I have already removed um, but they do have this uh, press fit connection for the rocker switch on the front panel uh, looks like they use the uh, female spade connectors soldered on the PCB and the rocker switch just plugs into those so I'm gonna have to separate those in order to remove this uh, PCB and show you more details unfortunately in the process of uh, removing the PCB from the front panel I ripped one of the contacts of the rocker switch because you see it's it's left on the PCB it was uh, stuck really really good in these uh, spade connectors um, maybe uh, it even catched some solder I'm not sure and uh, I thought it was going to to release but it released from the switch itself with one of the contacts of the switch so I'm gonna have to fix that by replacing the rocker switch I don't think I have one which is uh, this model with four pins but I'm gonna order one and replace it I really couldn't uh, leave it like that without showing you some of the stuff I have uh, seen on this board. So on this board we have a very small uh, micro from STC. It's this guy right here, an 8-pin uh, microcontroller. Then we have a, a shift register and an a 16-pin unmarked device. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the only micro on the board. It could be and uh, it could be using the uh, uh, shift register but uh, they could also have another 
bigger micro which is this one the unmarked uh, package because there are also a lot of uh, inputs to read we have uh, three uh, switches uh, right here another two uh, right here but these ones could be in parallel so I'm gonna count them as one so I'm not really sure if they're using that uh, only one uh, micro of course there are techniques to read multiple switches with a single analog pin they could all be um, switching different uh, resistor values so you could read that analog value with just a single pin uh, but uh, I'm not sure that is what they're doing here as for the uh, power switching device uh, the uh, part number is um, BCR30AM from Mitsubishi Electric and this is a 30 amp triac as I've mentioned before, they're, they're just using a copper plane on the PCB to dissipate the power from this track, but it's probably not going to get very hot because it's only switching for a few milliseconds. There was also another small uh, PCB which was uh, routed and it was uh, attached somehow in, in this section. This is not populated, so it's probably for a different model which has some other functions. There's also a bunch of pads in this area. Uh, which are not populated so I'm guessing they use the, the same PCB for a different model uh, which probably has more functions. I've managed to uh, repair temporarily the rocker switch until I can get a replacement and the machine is working. Now let's uh, do a real world test. I have here an 18650 cell and one of the strips they included in the package this is a 0.1 millimeter uh, strip it's a nickel plated uh, steel I think so let's see how well this uh, attaches to my 18650 cell I have the machine set for 70% power and a two pulse mode I'm gonna do uh, four points in total so this is the four point welding that the machine did this is how it looks up close let's see how strong it is let's hope I don't cut myself it's pretty strong and as you can see the uh, strip broke but that small piece still remained attached so it's a really really strong weld uh, that will be able to carry the current and you will not have to worry about this ever coming loose or creating a uh, contact issue now let's also try uh, double the thickness this is a uh, 0.2 uh, millimeter strip let's see how well this will uh, will solder to the battery I have adjusted the current to the maximum it says 0, zero but I believe it's 100% it only has two digits to display no the power was very very weak let's try 99 percent here so i think the uh, maximum duty cycle you can set here it's uh, 99 percent let's try again so once again i try to do that uh, four point uh, welding let's see this one is pretty strong as well can't get it to separate yep it's really really strong and uh, since this one is uh, not 0.2 millimeters thick uh, even the nickel strip is uh, is very strong once you have the uh, pedal inserted into the machine the operating mode changes a bit so it, it, does, it no longer uh, triggers the welding upon pressing of the uh, welding arms you have to uh, press the pedal to trigger the welding like this and now to give you my final thoughts about this machine in terms of functionality it has a pretty simple uh, user interface really easy really easy to use and it has sufficient power to weld strips and build small battery packs certainly good enough for hobby or occasional use I'm not sure how well it would do if you want to use it uh, professionally uh, then the re reliability becomes a question can this machine run several hours every day 
I don't know but you would probably want a higher quality one in that scenario because this one at least on the mechanical side of things is not inspiring a, a lot of uh, confidence uh, especially the uh, the welding arms they don't seem very solid like they they could take uh, the abuse of daily usage the electrical wiring as we saw during the third down seems very nice the uh, chassis is grounded the transformer seems to be of decent quality i didn't notice any uh, problems any security any safety issues with the wiring they use quite thick copper wires on the secondary the control pcb seems to be using uh, low quality components and the assembly job is not so great but that's no surprise we observe exactly the same things with pretty much every piece of gear coming from these uh, lower price range uh, tools from china but in the end this is what all is about the price the machine is currently available for uh, $120 shipping included on Banggood and I believe it, it's worth that much. If you're a hobbyist or RC enthusiast occasionally welding battery packs then this might be a good choice for you. Ultimately you could even design your own control board if uh, you think this one is not enough but since this one does the job I don't see the point of designing your own. As usual, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to check out the links I place in the description. Subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, Merry Christmas!